Well, hello everyone and good evening. Thanks so much for coming over to the house and inviting me into your house. Uh, it's Passion Week and with that in mind, I want us to, let's worship the Lord, shall we? Just uh, quiet everything in the house and quiet your heart and come before the Lord with praise and with thanksgiving. Our Father's good, all his ways are good. And uh, praise God. Again, I'm glad you're here. Somebody told me they like the look. Can you see the fireplace in the background? I, hope. I actually stole it from FDR in his fireside chats. And, uh, but he did have that wonderful quote from a fireside chat where he said, there is nothing to fear but fear itself. And uh, David, King David said, when I am afraid, then I will trust the Lord. So let's just bring everything to the Lord right now, shall we? Father, it's in Jesus' name that we come before you. And I thank you, Lord, for this wonderful opportunity for us to gather together. Uh, Lord, as the church, as your church, the body of Christ, I love it that we right now have a church without walls. We have a church uh, without separation, in a sense. We're all in unity, so I welcome everyone to this. Let's worship the Lord. We praise you, Father, in Jesus' wonderful name. Everybody says... Amen. You were the word at the beginning, one with God the Lord most high. Your hidden glory in creation now revealed in you are Christ. What a beautiful name. What a beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a beautiful name it is, nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus. didn't want heaven without us so jesus you brought heaven down my sin was great your love was greater what could separate us now what a beautiful name it is what a wonderful name name it is nothing compares to this what a wonderful name it is the name of
know you're with us right now at this time. Pray, Father, that you'd minister to the hearts of everyone listening, Lord. Do a work. Do a miracle, even in this time, Father. In Jesus' name. spoke a word you were singing over me you have been so so good to me before I took a breath you breathed your life in me you have been so so kind to me oh the overwhelming Chases me down flights till I'm found, leaves the 99. I could earn it, I don't deserve it, till you gave yourself away. Oh, the overwhelming, never ending, reckless love of God. I was your foe, still your love fought for me. Thank you, Lord. You have been so, so good to me. When I felt no worth, you paid it all for me. You have been so, so kind to me. Oh, the overwhelming. jump in here you'll know when it comes time <laughs> thank you Lord. I come to the garden alone while the dew is still on the roses and the voice I hear falling on Son of God, this All right, here we go. Oh, 
here it is. And he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own and the joy we share as we tarry there none other has ever of his voice is so sweet the birds hush their singing and the melody that he gave to me within my heart is ringing and he walks with me and he talks Tells me I am his own And the joy we share As we tarry there None other has ever known I'd stay in the garden with him Though the night around me is falling it's me go through the voice of woe, his voice to me is calling, and he walks with me, and he talks with me, and he tells me I am his own, and the joy we share. As we tarry there, none other has ever known. And the joy we share as we tarry there, none other has ever In storms of life, O oh Lord Almighty, there is a place that I can't turn. Though troubles rage, there is an answer. I keep my mind. stayed on you I keep my mind stayed on you stayed on you stayed on you keep my mind stayed on you you promised peace is my possession Though mighty winds may blow it will stand The peace it is my course corrected I keep my mind Stayed on
Heavenly Father, we do right now put our minds, our hearts, and our thoughts, our energies, our plans, our purposes, we put them all on you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for this week that you suffered. Thank you that we understand the price that was paid in order to purchase us out of the world and out of condemnation and as adopted sons and daughters now into your family through faith in Christ. Please, Lord, be with us now during this time. Bless this time. Holy Spirit, you come now. Please. Be the teacher. I give you my mind and my heart, my thoughts and my will. And I pray these things in Jesus' wonderful name and everyone says, Amen. Thank you for worshiping with me. Praise God. Um, do we have any? Oh, we do have an announcement. Uh, this Friday is, of course, Good Friday leading into Resurrection Sunday, but for Good Friday, we have always had a communion service. So I would like to do that again. So we're gonna have a communion service. I think that my plans are right now, and you can pray for me on this, that we would just do three or four worship songs like we did right now, and then have communion. Now, I know maybe you don't have grape juice at home, and you maybe don't have the little crackers that we used uh, at uh, church on a regular basis, but I wanna let you know something. Jesus didn't have Welch's grape juice or those little crackers either. <laughs> so uh, Jeannie, was, Jeannie and I were talking. She said, just tell him to put out some water. Didn't Jesus turn water into wine anyway? So just put out a little bit of water, a little piece of bread, and we will have communion with the Lord. And I am really looking forward to that. So for tonight, uh, oh, I'm going to drop that Friday at like 2 o'clock is what I'm thinking right now. So uh, it will be on there. If you can watch it uh, too, that'd be great. I'll have the countdown clock and everything. And then afterward, uh, it'll just be online all Friday so that you can, uh, you know, you can log on and watch that. The link will be on Facebook and it'll also be on YouTube. And thank you for all the new folks that are uh, subscribing to our church channel on YouTube. I greatly appreciate that. And as the rest of the YouTubers say, smash that like button and subscribe. <laughs> it sounds silly, I know. All right, uh, let's get to the word. How does that sound? I love the word of God. You know I love the word of God. So let's open up to Mark chapter 14. That's Mark chapter 14. I, I, man, I want us to be back together so I can... Get into the reg. I love going through a whole book. You know that the whole Bible. But for tonight, mm, this foreseeable future, I think we might be having a number of uh, topical teachings. So, uh, yeah, hi to you all out there. You are loved. You are loved. Tell somebody you are loved. Type it in if you want. You are loved. Mark chapter fourteen, verses one through five, and I'm calling this Mary, our worship leader. Like that title? All right. Mark chapter 14 could be looked at like a play. A play that has four parts to it in this chapter. Four chapters right along following Jesus. First, we have Mary who demonstrates her fragrant worship of love for the Lord. She becomes our worship leader. Second, we have Judas who is out for money and he's just a, just a bad dude, bad actor. Ver, uh, number three in this four-part play, uh, towards the end of the chapter, we will have the religious leaders coming forward to arrest Jesus. In the fourth uh, act of the play of Mark chapter 14, we will have Peter who denies our Lord three times. You, We're all familiar with that, aren't we? And yet the Lord did not throw Peter overboard, nor will he do that to you or to me. So today we look at the opening verses of this chapter, and I want us in specific to turn our eyes towards Jesus, of course, but also Mary and what she does, her extravagant and so very uh, fragrant, I almost said flagrant, but that kind of works too, doesn't it? It's extravagant, it's flagrant, and it's uh, fragrant worship of Jesus. 
Uh, Judas will also kind of come into the mix because he's the leader of the dissenters to what uh, Mary does, but he only serves as a dark backdrop to Mary's bright act of love. So this is the time of the Passover. This is the annual feast which celebrates, as you know, the delivering of God's people from slavery out of Egypt. Slavery uh, to us signifies sin, Egypt, the world. So uh, this is the time, the Passover, where it gives us such a strong image here, and perhaps the strongest image for me that comes out of the Passover ceremony is that each family was to sacrifice a lamb, a lamb without spot and without blemish, and put that blood over their doorposts and over their lentils of their homes. Then when the angel of death passed through Egypt, killing the oldest son, he passed over those houses and the people within them who had had that sacrifice were spared. What a picture of salvation. Jesus is our Passover lamb, amen? Is he your Passover lamb? He's my Passover lamb for sure. And it is on account of what he has done by paying the price of our judgment that our eternal lives are spared and salvation is ours. To all who have Jesus as their Passover lamb. In fact, that's how Jesus started his earthly ministry, didn't he? With John the Baptist introducing Jesus. Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. That's the overall setting. But the specifically in the verses that we are looking at, it's a dinner party. And who doesn't like going to a dinner party? I like going to dinner parties. And in fact, you can invite me over to a dinner party at your house when this is over. I would like that. <laughs> dinner party. We're going to a dinner party. And this is a dinner party like uh, no other. There's no dinner party like this one at all. Uh, at this time, Jesus has, of course, been gaining in popularity. And why not? Because he is healing and teaching and showing the love of God. So why wouldn't he? be gaining in popularity. The religious leaders at this, of course, are becoming very concerned. They don't want to lose their place and position. They don't want to be seen. Uh, they don't want to be honest about their sins. How about that? They don't want to be honest about their pride. Uh, in fact, they rather enjoy it. And uh, sadly, that represents a lot of the world. But be that as it may, Jesus loves us all. And so many then were turning away from the religious leaders and they were turning towards the love of Jesus. On their agenda of the religious leaders was just this, the capture, the arrest, and the killing of Jesus. That's what's on their hearts. So that's the overall setting, the dinner party. Oh, by the way, this dinner party is put on by Simon the leper. You like that? Uh, I kind of think that they shouldn't call him Simon the leper. I think that they should call him Simon the one-time leper because Simon was healed of his leprosy by Jesus. Of course he was. Otherwise, he wouldn't be throwing a dinner party, would he? So that's where it's, this is all taking place. Also at this party is Jesus. How would you like to have Jesus over at your house as your dinner, you know, special guest? Knock at the door. Oh, Jesus, come on in. That's what happened. So there's Jesus at this dinner party. His disciples are there with him. Mary and Martha are there with him. And another one of the guests of honor is a guy by the name of Lazarus. He is the brother of Mary and Martha. And oh, by the way, it's the same Lazarus that Jesus raised from the dead four days after he was dead and in the tomb. Wow. Wow. Uh, that's pretty amazing. There were many other people there, and there was Jesus to teach them. I always marvel at that. We have the living Word of God teaching the living Word of God to all who will listen. Uh, quite a guest list, wouldn't you say, at this dinner party? Um, I think this is one of those times where 
You know, sometimes we play that game, the game where you go, uh, if you could travel back in time, uh, where would you like to go? If I could travel back in time, I would like to go to this dinner party. Want to come with me? I would really like that. Uh, in a way, without music, Mary becomes our worship leader. I'd like us to think of her in that manner. I know, I have no doubts that right now Mary is worshiping Jesus. And chances are <clears throat> good that if Mary was here today, excuse me for one second. Thank you, sweetheart. <laughs> I should do this every time when I uh, lead worship, I get thirsty. Ah, that tastes good. That's regular water. Now let's get back to the living water. <laughs> so uh, if Mary was here today, I have no doubts that she would be worshiping Jesus and probably leading us in worship of Jesus. Uh, you know, uh, I love it when we worship together. I wish I could get across to you uh, the sense that I have when I worship. I mean, uh, through the years, there have just been, I can only term them as just blessed and magnificent times of worship. I meet with God in worship. I, I wish I could get that across to everyone, what that's like, to worship Jesus, to, you know, uh, I've probably shared this before, but there are times when, when I have been worshiping through the years where it just... You know, the presence of the Lord shows up, and I don't know how to express that other than sometimes I think it's like the air gets heavy. And it's like, oh, Lord, you're right here. See, it's true. The, the Lord inhabits the praises of his saints. So as we worship, let go of ourselves and put our eyes on Jesus. He's right there with us. Oh, man. Learn how to worship if you don't already know. If you know how, let her rip. So here we are. Uh, please follow along then as I read Mark chapter 14, verses 1 through 5. Then we'll, we'll say a word of prayer. And then um, I don't have a long teaching here but because I want to focus on just Mary for tonight. But here we go. Mark chapter 14, Mark writes, After two days it was Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread. And the chief priest and the scribes sought how they might take Jesus by trickery and put him to death. Go figure. But they said, not during the feast, lest there be an uproar of the people. And being in Bethany at the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at the table, a woman having an alabaster flask of very costly oil of spikenard, she, then she broke the flask poured it on his head. But there were some who were indignant among themselves and said, why was this fragrant oil wasted? For it might have been sold for more than 300 denarii and given to the poor. And they criticized her sharply. Interesting. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for this evening with my brothers and sisters in Christ. I thank you, Heavenly Father, that you are teaching all the pastors how to speak to the church without walls, that we can speak to the church and this just keeps on going and going and going as the church forwards this to people who need to hear about the love of Jesus for them. Lord, let that happen with this simple word. For I ask this in Jesus' precious name, and everybody says, Amen. Now, some additional information, which I think we need, is given to us uh, about Mary's act of worship, and that's in John chapter 12. So John also writes about this in his gospel. Uh, he lets us know that this is Mary, the sister of Martha, the brother of Lazarus. And I add, Mary is found here where she always seems to be found. Can anybody, this is your quiz for the night. Where is Mary usually found? Uh-huh, uh-huh, that's right. <laughs> she is found at the feet of Jesus. Uh, and she is found there in worship, she's found there in prayer, and she's found there in learning. What a tremendous woman this is. 
What an example to us she is of the life and the desire of the passionate believer. That's who Mary is. The uh, commemoration of this week, Passover week, sometimes referred to as Holy Week, uh, tells us that, that once we get to this point, we will have no more record of Jesus walking the shores of Galilee. Perhaps, believer, we will see that when Jesus Christ returns. Won't that be something? We have no more accounts after this of him moving freely from one city to another or teaching or healing. What we have here is the start of a very lonely time for our Savior as the cross looms directly ahead of him at the end of this week. So let's go to a dinner party, shall we? And uh, I'll bet all kinds of folks wanted to see Lazarus, you know, somebody back from the dead. That would be pretty tremendous, wouldn't it? And in the middle of the party, and I, I kind of see it as, I kind of see this as dramatic and maybe even, maybe even um, quick uh, as Mary has made this decision. And Mary comes into the room with an alabaster flask of very costly oil of spikenard. What a sight. Uh, another thing you don't see every day, you know, a woman coming in with the oil of, uh, 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 of spikenard and, and, and her brother raised from the dead. Now, the flask of the bottle would have to be snapped open in order to pour the oil out. And I'll bet that as she did that, that thing went off like a firecracker snap in the middle of the room. Everybody is watching. Everybody is shocked, except Jesus. Everybody is like, what is going on here? So we read, she broke the flask and poured it on his head. Hold that picture for a moment. Let's talk about spikenard. Spikenard is a plant that grew and grows mostly in India. It is a plant with spikes on the top of it. <laughs> Makes sense, doesn't it? Spikenard, that's good. And when it ground, it's ground up, it produces an exotic oil. It was a very, very expensive oil. So somehow, and we're not told how, I, you know, I'll, I'll ask Mary one day. You can ask her, Mary, how in the world did you come up with 300 denarii worth of uh, oil of spikenard? Or perhaps it was gifted to her. Or perhaps it was left to her. Because you see, sometimes it is used uh, as a wedding dowry, and sometimes it is used as a burial oil. They definitely did not need to use that on Lazarus, right? So somehow she got a hold of that. And 300 denarii was a year's worth of wages for the average worker at that time. That's a lot of money. Consider a couple of things then with me, would you? First, think of the reaction of the room. <laughs> as that oil was snapped and then that aroma must have filled the room and everybody in it. You've got to be impressed with the way in which Mary threw caution to the wind. The reaction must have been like, you know, like she's some kind of intruder coming in here. We're trying to quiz Jesus and and uh, Lazarus, and she comes pouring in, literally, uh, doing something very impractical, thought by, by some. She's doing something costly. But let me ask, can the broken, open heart, act of worship, and love for Jesus ever, ever be too extravagant? I don't think so. One Bible commentator wrote of our acts of love and worship to one another that can occur. And he said, it can occur in the simplest of things, the impulse to send a letter of thanks, the impulse 
to tell someone of our love or gratitude, the impulse to give to someone a special gift or speak a special word to someone, which we got that today, didn't we? One of our granddaughters uh, sent a, a love note to us and man, was that good. Okay, he goes on to write, the tragedy is when the impulse is so often strangled. This world, I'll add, and the church family, would be so much lovelier if there were more people like this woman, Mary, who acted on her impulse of love because she knew in her heart of hearts that if she did not do it then, she would never do it. Isn't that right? Doesn't that just touch you? All right, here's the second thing I want you to do. Imagine with me right now, signing over a paycheck for one year's wages as an act of worship. Think about that for a moment. Signing over a whole year's wages in one moment as an act of worship. This, this act of worship of hers is it's just beautiful in its grandeur. As I thought about it, as I pretended like I was at the dinner party, you know that I like to do that. I like to insert myself into the Word of God, and hopefully the Word of God is inserting itself into me as I do that. But I was there at the dinner party in my mind, and I was thinking, wow, we that is extravagant. That is the grandeur of worship. And uh, kind of makes, uh, it can kind of make our worship seem small, can it? In comparison to Mary, our worship leader for tonight, uh, you know, wh what do we do? We say, well, hey, let's not get carried away, you know, let's, uh, you know, do, you don't have to, you don't have to really, even though maybe the worship song says lift our hands up, maybe we, you know, you really don't have to do that. And, you know, what will people think if they see us do that? Or somebody might say, oh, I've heard that worship song too many times now, so I can't worship with it. Or, oh my gosh, what would Mary be doing as a worship leader for us? Oh my gosh, a church. We are worshiping Jesus. Wow. You see, our Heavenly Father is a giver. So, to connect with His heart is to be a giver as well. Your Father in Heaven is a giver. We should be a giver. For God so loved, yes, that He gave His Son to pay the ransom for our lives out of the judgment of sin. Jesus wants to pick up the tab for your sins. He's picked up the tab of mine by faith in him. So Mary is giving to Jesus because Jesus has given to her. The Bible says we love him because he first loved us. Jesus had given to her her brother Lazarus back from the dead. Uh, he had healed their friend, Simon the leper. He had treated Mary with tremendous dignity and respect out of the cultural norm at that time. He had shared with her the secrets of the kingdom of heaven, teaching her as she sat at his feet. So she becomes our example of responding to God's love and giving. Uh, let me tell you what her action was not. So we're thinking about what it was. Let me tell you what her action was not. This is very important to us. It was not out of obligation. The gift of worship that Mary gave to Jesus, it was not religious. What the act of love that he gave to Jesus was not a ritual. It was instead a pure act of relational response and love to our Father in heaven. Further, it was sacrificial, but it was not a payment. You see, Jesus said, freely you have received, freely give. 
That's what Mary is doing here and exampling for us. She is to be admired for this. She is to be followed for this. She abandoned herself to the moment with God in human flesh. She let go of all worry. She let go of all wondering what others might think. She was there to worship Jesus. So tell me what else could matter to Mary? What else could take precedence over her act of love? Quite a worship leader, Mary, wouldn't you say? Now, she didn't think about the people around her. Neither should we when we're worshiping. She didn't think about the dinner party. She didn't think about the dictates of the culture, not even her own hair, which she used to wipe the feet of Jesus. What a tremendous act of love. And listen, we men, especially we husbands, know that under normal circumstances to tread very lightly in regards to a woman's hair. Don't we know that? <laughs> Bible commentator Barclay writes the following. Love does not neatly calculate the less or the more. It is not concerned to see how little it can decently give. If it gave all it had, if indeed it gave all the world, the gift would still be too little. You see, Jesus said, and let Jesus talk to you with this and let Jesus talk to me with this. Jesus said in John 4, 23 and 24, here it is. The hour is coming and now is when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father is seeking such to worship him. God is a spirit and those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. And if you ask me, what does it look like to worship Jesus in spirit and in truth? I would say, look no further than Mary. That complete abandonment to worship the Lord Jesus Christ. And this, to this point, made me stop as I sat right there. It made me stop and it made me ask myself these three questions. And so I'd like to ask you these three questions or better than that. Ask yourself these three questions. Here's the first one. What does my worship of Jesus look like? What does it look like when I worship Jesus? And I'm not just the singing, but the acts of worship that I'm doing because I worship Jesus. Here's the second question. What does my worship of Jesus lead me to say and to do? And lastly, how is it that I spend my life to worship him? See, what she did was costly. What she did, she was willing and ready to do. She was willing to give her life and her all to worship Jesus. That should be us. Look, as you worship Jesus, you're going to find peace. You're going to find freedom. You're going to find love in that place of letting go of self and grabbing hold of Jesus. Now, once she was done with this, John tells us in his gospel, and the house was filled with the fragrance of oil. And our houses are to be filled with the fragrance of worship and the fragrance of Jesus. You see, Jesus and Mary walked out of that house smelling the same. Mary was able to bring that same fragrance of Jesus every place she went. And that's what happens to us, believer. Break open that heart. Break open that heart of worship for Jesus. It will bless the Father and it will bless you and it will bless others. Now, the whole house smelled like it, which tells me that everyone became impacted with uh, her extravagant worship. It, it hit everybody. And I actually, I want to leave it right there. I want to leave this right there with you. I want you as you lay in your bed tonight, or maybe when we're done worshiping here, you go back and listen to the worship again. 
This is Passion Week. Jesus showed his passionate love for us in that he died for our sins. He paid the price for our sins so that we don't have to pay the price for our sins. That's what it means to be saved. I'm saved from paying the price for my own sins. You're saved by faith in Jesus Christ who paid the price for your sins. That's it. That's what salvation is. Please read on through to the rest of the four-act play of this chapter. And uh, this is Passion Week, so give to Jesus the passion of your praise. Amen? Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for this night during this Passion Week. Passion Wednesday is this for us. And I pray, Lord God, that you would teach us to worship, teach us to praise, bring us to that place where we eagerly abandon ourselves to the worship of you. I pray now, Father, for blessings over my brothers and my sisters, Lord. I pray, Heavenly Father, that you would meaningfully touch each one's life. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness and your mercy. It endures forever. We pray these things in Jesus' wonderful name. And all my dear brothers and sisters say, Amen. Amen. God bless you.